We know that when there's nothing in the way, light tends to just spread out from its source and travel in roughly straight lines. So each piece of light travels in a roughly straight line. So the light coming from my face, the light's going out in all directions, but some of the light is going straight from my face to the camera. And that's why you can see an image of me, because the light's not getting all mixed up on the way. Well, what happens when it hits an object? Well, there's only a few things that can happen. It can be transmitted, for example, like the air. So the air between my face and the camera is basically transparent to light, and so the light will just go straight through. And remember that when light transmits through matter, it actually slows down a little bit. So the speed that it goes at is the speed of the vacuum divided by some number called the refractive index. So technically the speed up here, the 3 by 10 to the 8 meters per second, is in vacuum. And we've already discussed the fact that if light comes in at an angle to a boundary between two materials where the refractive index changes and therefore the speed changes, then that's got to change direction of the light. In this diagram we're describing the direction that the light takes. This is the form of a ray like that. And this is often called the ray model of light. Which is not to say that light travels in narrow beams called rays, just that you can represent the direction that the light's going as a ray, and that's a really good model for working out all sorts of things, including the way lenses work and mirrors and so forth. And so we have these light rays describing the direction of the light. We talk about the direction of the light with respect to this gray line. This gray line here is called the normal to the surface. So here's the surface along here. And the line that's at right angles to the surface we call the normal to the surface. And then these angles just tell us the direction compared to that normal. And the first one is often called the angle of incidence because it's the angle at which the light is incident to the surface. And then when it goes through, this is often called the angle of refraction. So what happens if light doesn't just pass straight through a material? Well, then it can get absorbed and or re-emitted. An extreme case of that is a mirror. So in a mirror, you've got glass, where light just passes through, and you've got a silver surface where light is bouncing off, and so it's being absorbed and re-emitted. And you can see, because the image is so clear, that the angles of incidence and the angles of reflection are very well controlled, otherwise the image will be all scrambled. And indeed, it's very easy to show that in reflection, the angle of incidence is exactly equal to the angle of reflection. So if you have the normal to the surface and your angle, your line of incidence coming in there, then you just, that defines a plane, and then it bounces off at exactly the same angle in that same plane. The plane is called the plane of incidence, and the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are equal. So we'll use I for the incidence, and R for the reflection. And this exact same behavior is also what you tend to see if you have something like a ball bouncing off a wall. And so if you have something that's conserving its energy as it bounces off, there's no particular friction to that surface, then you tend to get things bouncing off with the angle of incidence being the angle of uh, reflection as well. And that's what happens for light. Or indeed it happens for light for certain kinds of surfaces. So for some silvered surfaces, we've got a silvered surface in this mirror here and a silver surface, just a piece of alfoil. And you can see there's no beautiful image here. So the angle of incidence isn't quite equal to the angle of reflection. Well, maybe that's not quite true because you can see that this surface is very rough. And so maybe on every small little piece of that where the angle is different, maybe the angle of incidence, the angle of reflection is the same, but over a whole surface like that, what happens is you have some light rays coming in and they scatter off in lots of different directions because the surface is in lots of different directions. And so this is called a diffuse reflection, and this is called a specular reflection. And then finally we have interaction between light and matter where it's not simply absorbing and re-emitting as almost one process, but it's actually a bit more complicated than that, and that's with absorption of other kinds. So look at this surface here, it's yellow. It's yellow because it's mainly reflecting the yellow light. Okay, so it's not reflecting all the frequencies or all the colors, it's just reflecting the yellow ones. And it's bouncing off and you can see I can't see a sort of yellowish image of me reflected in here. So what that means is it's quite diffuse. What's happening to all the other frequencies? What's happening to all the other colors? Well, they're being absorbed and that energy isn't immediately going back out as light. That energy is being shared around amongst the molecules and going into a whole bunch of different areas. And eventually that comes out as heat or indeed infrared light. So if you shine a lamp on this, the yellow frequencies bounce off and the others eventually just heat the thing up and it comes off as other frequencies. 
So normally if you want to see something that exhibits lovely specular reflection, you have to make it deliberately to do so. Most things, the yellow cardboard, me, the desk, the chair, they all have diffuse reflection and mainly absorption of lots of other colours, and so the light just comes off them, gently bounced off some light source. Something like the screen that you're looking at now is making its own light, which it's setting out, but normally this is the kind of behaviour you get. Now if you do see specular reflection, it's either because you're looking at a very still pool of water, or something like that, or else you've deliberately made a mirror. And people also deliberately make things that change the direction of light, for example lenses. So anytime you use glass or mirrors to manipulate images in particular ways, those things are called optics, and from Snell's law, and from the law of reflection, we can figure out how to build optics, how to build things that control the path that light takes.